So today I'll be showing you how to replace a defective battery cell in your Prius. Now this is a pretty notorious issue with the Prius, you know, besides it being ugly or whatnot. But most people think that it'll cost, you know, thousands of dollars to fix, which isn't necessarily the case. Each cell uh, individually is like 35 bucks off of Amazon or eBay. So it's actually pretty cheap if you know what you're doing. Um, that being said, let me kind of show you how to take this apart. Hopefully save you a little bit of money in the process. The first and most important part will be to remove the safety clip. So it's just going to be pulled up and then you're going to bend it out and it's going to pop right out. After that, we're going to have five 12 millimeter bolts holding the actual casing in place. And then we have 10 millimeter bolts that hold this little side piece in place. Once you unscrew those, uh, we can actually have access to the battery cells and then we can take a look, see what's going on in there. Now we have to remove this little piece, make sure you don't lose that, set it aside. We're going to have to unscrew those guys there. And then there are also three plugs here that we need to make sure are disconnected. Um, also on this side, the little air vents. Make sure those are unplugged. And you can go ahead and get this out of the way as well. Alright, now that we got these two wires disconnected, I usually just use the hinge over here to keep them steady. Uh, we have the bolts back on here so we don't lose them. Um, you can go ahead and begin taking apart these little plastic pieces. The little scanner I have um, shows the defective blocks as block number two and then block number six somewhere over here. Um, but whatever block it is, you start off from the side with the fan. So one, two, this is one of the defective blocks, three, four, five, and six. This is the other defective block. Um, and what you will need is a little DC scanner. Something like this right here. Um, and then basically you need to unscrew these little bolts from both sides up until, so this is the sixth block. We're gonna do it until the seventh block. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Um, just so that each battery stand alone, we can measure the voltage from it. All right, so we got all of the bolts off on both sides. Now we're gonna peel back this little orange plastic piece. Uh, make sure none of these uh, pieces fall out too. Uh, so we're gonna peel it back up until the seventh one, so the, this is the sixth one. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We are gonna do 1.5, and then we are going to test each battery cell. So we're gonna do red on this side, black on the minus, and uh, so forth, alternating between each uh, battery cell. Okay, and the defective cell is gonna be this guy right here. Um, it's throwing up 6.9 on the voltage, while the rest of them are showing up uh, 8.2. Um, as far as the cell block 2, though, it seems fine. They're both throwing up 8.2. Uh, so at this point, we're going to remove both of these cells, inspect them, see if there's any leaking, and then we're going to remove this cell. Underneath, you're going to find 8mm um, bolts, alternating sides. So I believe it starts off on the positive side and then negative, positive, negative. You're going to need to unscrew those, but before you do, you're going to need to unscrew these guys. These are held on by 12 millimeter, and then these guys down here are held on by 10 millimeter. So we're going to get rid of these guys first on both sides, and then these 12 millimeter, there's also two at the bottom. Once we have that loosened up, uh, we can go ahead and begin unscrewing them from the bottom. We're going to do all the way up to around here. Uh, go ahead and you can unplug the vents from both sides. And be careful, um, there's temperature sensors like this both on top here and then underneath each cell. There's one that clips on here and then one that clips on around here. Um, so be careful when you are removing the cells that you don't damage that sensor. I did find a leak in one of the cells. It's very tiny, but that little guy right there has a little crack or scratch or something in it. So we're gonna swap this cell out um, and then we're going to go ahead and inspect the rest as well. All right, so we found the corrupted cell and you can see that it is bloated quite a bit. 
um, that's why it was throwing the uh, low voltage. So we are going to set that aside and replace it with another one and then we're going to put these cells back into order. Um, so of course you have to make sure that the cells are alternating. So I already put one in wrong. So I've got to make sure that it's plus minus all the way around. Um, and then usually on the plus side, there is going to be the bolt that you have to make sure is paired up with it um, and, and tightened down. Make sure that all of these are in the correct order and you can quickly kind of go and zigzag make sure that they're all correct. Uh, we are going to go ahead and replace the mounts on these guys on the vents. Here's a bit of video inception for you. So I realized that while editing the video, I didn't really explain on how I put the battery back together. So I kind of made a quick little diagram on how it how I did it. So from the fan, the battery blocks are numbered one through 14. We removed one cell from block two and then one cell from block six. So when we took those out, the rest of the cells were maintaining the voltage, I believe it was like 8.2. So we shifted all of these down, and then with the new cells that we replaced, we put those in cell block one. So that way, if there were any issues with the new cells, we can just take apart cell block one without having to unscrew all the way to cell block six or seven again. So that way, it's a lot easier um, in case you have any issues. So that is very important. Make sure before tightening anything down that all of these cells are negative, positive, negative, positive, and so forth. All right, so we got the bus bars tightened down. We got this tightened down. Make sure you don't forget to tighten the underside as well. Um, it actually holds the cells in place. Now, once you do that, make sure all of the copper pieces are there. We are going to go ahead and put the orange pieces back together. And then we're gonna go ahead and start putting the nuts back on. All right, so now that we have the battery back in its place, uh, we're gonna basically do it the opposite way. Um, so we're going to replace these guys, make sure you don't forget to connect the vent uh, here, um, and then make sure you don't forget to connect this guy as well. And there's one more vent that goes from the actual uh, fan to the battery, but that's going to go on top. Uh, so we're going to wait until we put that guy on to put that on there. Um, make sure you don't forget to plug these guys in and then make sure that you connect these as well before you put the cover on. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. But we got those guys on. Make sure that these are in there pretty tight. And this lower vent is basically the exhaust vent for the battery. So make sure that that is in there pretty solid, nice and snug, and then I want to make sure that that is connected on there as well. Alright, and then once that guy is on there, make sure you do not forget about this little piece there. We're going to put the cover on, um, and then we're actually going to do the larger cover first. Uh, and then we're going to go to tighten the cover down to the four, four millimeter bolts on the sides. Um, in the back there's actually one more down the middle, so there's five. And then once that is tightened, we're going to go ahead and place the smaller cover on there. Alright, so we got that cover on. Um, we're going to go ahead and connect the vent from the actual fan. Alright, that's pretty solid. We're going to toss this cover on. And then last thing, we're going to go ahead and plug in the safety clip. There we go. So it's going to push in, clamp, and then push down. And then we're going to go ahead and start up the car. Uh, so by no means drive like this. There are more support beams that connect the actual battery to the chassis. 
same thing on this side but we're just going to leave it like this because we're going to start it up make sure that the battery cells are working um that way we don't have to take everything apart again if it isn't working um but i know it's probably going to throw a code right away because the battery cells we replaced were 7.5 volts where the rest of them were 8.2 but we are going to go ahead and start up the car and you should hear three clicks you heard one click probably still recognizes the codes from before so we're going to go ahead and clear those out and then we are going to go ahead and restart the car so from here you can check the battery cells so you can see the lowest one is 15 volts and like i said it's probably uh, the first ones that we replaced the two that we replaced the rest of them look pretty solid um, so with these, these should be good. I just have to drive on it a few hours um, and then it should level out. Um, it will throw the code though, since one of the battery cells is different from the rest. Um, but for now, yep, there it is. We're gonna go ahead and clear it out. We're gonna drive it once it throws the codes. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clear them out again. is going to keep on popping up until the battery levels off so it took about a day for the battery to level off and stop down the codes hopefully you can follow these steps and save yourselves a little bit of money let me know if you found this video helpful or if you would like me to elaborate on some of the steps drop a comment send me a dm and i'll get back to you as soon as possible